In this video, I'll show you how to set up your Epson EcoTank ET2800 from the very beginning. First step, obviously, is to connect this end of this cable that came included on the back of the printer over here and connect the other end in your outlet. Next step is to power on the printer. And by the way, this control panel is able to tilt to 90 degrees. So if you prefer doing this standing up, you can put it in this position and see everything very easily. In my case, I will keep it this way. And now I'll just press the power button once to power it on for the first time. They will now ask us to select the language we want this printer to operate. I will simply keep it to English, but if you want to change it, simply use these arrows to navigate in this menu. Then press OK to confirm. Next, they will ask you if you want to finish this setup using the Epson Smart Panel app. In our case, we want to do it this way. In our case, we will select No here and press OK. We'll do the whole setup using the printer only. I think it's easier. Once you get this message on your screen, see the Start Here bundle with the printer or on the website to complete initialization. Then pr press OK. Then press OK again. Press OK once again. And now they will ask us to fill the ink tank. This printer does not take any ink cartridges. You'll have these bottles that come included with the printer that you can buy more afterwards. By the way, I'll put link in the description if you want to get some of these from Amazon. And we need to fill each separate ink tanks corresponding to the right color. So let me show you how to do this. First, we have to open this compartment and uh, it's just a small plastic cap that swings open this way simply by pulling it out. And then we have four different containers. Each of them are clearly marked over here. This is for the black one. The second one is for the yellow. The third one for the magenta and the fourth one for the cyan. So let's start with the first one, the black one. Take your black ink bottle, the Epson 522, and then open this blue cap over here simply by putting your finger on the top and pulling it out. It will swing the same way as the door did. Unscrew the top of the bottle, this way. And by the way, it's very important to, no, to not mix up the color. So do not put the black in another container over here because this could ca can cause many problems. Fortunately enough, Epson thought about that and each bottles have a different nozzle shape. So the black one has this nozzle shape, the red one another one, and even if you try putting it in the wrong one, unless you press very hard, you will not be able. Next step, we'll have to put this bottle upside down, right over there, and let the ink flow by itself. So I'll take the bottle and you see over here, there's two slots and the bottle itself has two of these plastic pieces sticking out. So those plastic pieces fit inside of those slots. And once you put the bottle inside, you can let it go. You don't need to touch it. You don't need to squeeze it as well. This could take a few seconds, even a minute. And you see over here, the ink level is going up. This is great. You just, you just have to let it do its thing. The bottle will stop itself refilling the printer when it will be full. Okay, now it is done. As you see here, the ink level is all the way up and we can take away the bottle. Do not worry, it will not leak. This is made so there's no spillage. So take the ink cap of the bottle and simply lift it and put it inside this way and you just have to screw the lid back like this until it clicks in place. Then we need to do the second one. Close this blue cap like this and open the yellow one. And we'll do the same exact thing. Take the yellow 5 to 2 Epson bottle, unscrew the lid 
and simply place the bottle upside down and let the ink flow. Once it's done, do the same thing. Usually there will be a bit left inside of the bottle, not much, but still, it's still usable. Now let's do the magenta. If while it's refilling the bottle stops flowing, what you can do is simply shake it gently like this. Do not press and do not remove it. Simply by doing small movement like this, sometimes it helps the flow and, uh, and this way it will continue refilling. Perfect, now remove the bottle, place back the cap. And finally, we'll add the cyan ink. And now, finally, I'll remove the bottle, place back the lid, make it click, and we're done with the refilling. You just need to place back this cap and close this cover. Next step is to go back on this control panel and keep press this question mark for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Next, we need to press on this button over here once. And you'll have to wait. As it, as it says on the screen over here, this could take about 11 minutes, especially if it's the first time using the printer. You just have to let it do its own thing and come back in 11 minutes. Okay, after 11 minutes passed, you'll get this screen saying initialization complete. Simply press the OK button. Next step, they will ask you to align the print head. You're not obligated to go through this step, but I highly encourage you since this will give you the best print quality. So press OK. And before going any further, we need to insert some paper inside of the paper tray located in the back of this printer. To insert the paper, we need to go on the back over here and you see there's a small plastic flap. You can open it and then take this black plastic piece over here and pull it out and let it rest on its back like this. Next step, you see there's two blue guides over here that we can move around. Well, depending what you want to print, in this case, I simply want to use an eight and a half by 11 paper. I'll push these blue guides to their extremities this way. If I wanted to print on a 4x6 paper, I'll simply bring these together and insert my paper so both sides of the paper are touching these blue guides over here. So I took my stack of paper and simply let it sit this way. Do not push it too much, it should simply rest by itself. Then you can close this small plastic flap. So this is how you insert paper inside of your Epson EcoTank ET2800. Thanks for watching, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Now that the paper is inserted, we're gonna press the OK button and select Confirm. And I'll press the OK button once again. Then I'll press this button over here to start the alignment printer will print this paper. You can extend this black tray over here because this is where the paper will sit once it gets printed. And on the screen over here they will ask you are there any missing segments. You just have to look over here on the top left corner and check if these lines have some missing segments. Are they some... is there some holes? Is there anything weird? This is how it should look. If yours does not look the same way, if yours has some blank spaces, ra random blank spaces, you should select yes. In my case, everything looks good and perfect. Therefore, I'll go and press the down arrow to select no 
and press OK. Then I'll press OK again and press this print button once again. Make sure that you have enough paper in your printer. Okay, once this is printed, on the screen you'll see and it will say look at this printout and choose the boxes with the least lines. On the next screen select the number. So I'll show you how to do it. So you see on this page we have number one, number two, number three, four, five, six, seven. So we'll start with the number one. Press OK. So for the number one line you need to select the one with the least lines. In my case if I look closely definitely number one looks the best. Five looks the worst. Therefore I'll enter one. By pressing these arrows I can select the number one and then press OK. Then on the line number two you'll do the same thing. So in my case over here the best looking one is number five and the worst one was number one. So I'll select five and press OK. So you just have to do this for each single line. And this is the last one. I'll press OK. And they will ask you to load a letter A4 size plain paper. I already did it, but if you didn't, simply put more paper A4 size and press this print button. And I need to select the one where the rectangles are not overlapping or are not separate. It may be hard to see on the camera, but in my case, I think number four looks the best. There is absolutely no line between them and they don't go one on top of each other. So I'll select number four here and press OK. Finally, you will get this message, print head alignment complete, and you will get in the main menu automatically. So on the control panel of your Epson printer, you should see the main menu. If you don't see the main menu, simply press the home button and you'll get there. Then use the arrows over here to navigate until you see Wi-Fi setup. Press the OK button. Then we have two different options. The first one is Wi-Fi and the second one is Wi-Fi Direct. Wi-Fi Direct means that you will connect your smartphone to your printer directly. The printer will have its own Wi-Fi network that you need to connect with your phone. So you do not need a home Wi-Fi network or you do not need any sort of router to do the Wi-Fi direct option. I still prefer doing the, wi the regular Wi-Fi setup. This way your printer will get connected to your home internet and any devices you have in your home, smartphone, iPad, computers, Mac, PC, will be able to print on this printer. So select Wi-Fi, recommended, and press the OK button. Then press OK. Then press OK once more. It will search for all the Wi-Fi networks around you. Just give it a few seconds. So here, so here they are. And you can use the top and down arrow to navigate and select your home or office network. In my case, it's this one. Press OK once it's selected and you'll have to type the password. I know the screen is quite small and to navigate is a bit uncomfortable, but, but this is the way we need to do it. So if you want to switch between uh, capital letters and numbers, you just have to select this small icon here, press OK and to switch to capital letters. If you press OK once more, you'll get, you'll get your numbers and also some symbols in if your password contain one of these. Once you type your password, go down and select the OK icon and press OK on the control panel. Next step over here, they simply ask you participate in the future design of Epson products, blah, blah, blah. So if you do not want to participate to this program, simply press this icon over here and you will be back in the main menu. To know that your printer is connected to your home Wi-Fi, you see over here there is a Wi-Fi symbol. Then on your smartphone you need to download the Epson Smart Panel on the App Store or Google Play Store. So just type Epson Smart Panel, go ahead and download it. Then launch the app. Press Agree press OK. 
press next, here press allow once, press next, press allow. And from this list you should see your Epson printer, you just need to select it by pressing on it and you'll get this blue check mark and connection is complete. Press OK. And here this is just a personal preference, they'll ask you which kind of screen do you want to use. In my opinion this one is a lot easier to navigate, so I'll select use tiles. Then press OK. And we are now on the main menu of the Epson app. On top over here you will always see the ink levels. So you can tap and see and have a better idea how much is left and refill if you need it. If you need to buy more ink bottles I'll leave links uh, in the description if you want to get them from Amazon. And at the same time you're supporting my channel. So I will go back and let me show you how to print using your phone. So I'll go ahead and press the print purple button here once and they will ask uh, if you want to print a picture or a document. I'll press document because this is what I will do next. And now it's time to select this document from your phone. So this is the document I want to print. Before doing anything I suggest you press on the top right corner over there where it says letter 8.5 by 11 and a menu should appear. It's very important to confirm these settings before printing, so make sure this is the name of your printer. If your document has multiple pages and you just want one of them to get printed, then select printing range here and select the exact page you want to print. In my case it's just one page, so I don't have to select anything. Make sure that the paper size is the correct one. Make sure that the media type is also the correct one, because if you're trying to print on glossy paper but plain paper is selected here, your ink will smear. It won't be nice and I already tested it, it will definitely create a mess. So make sure the media type is the correct one. Just check the other settings over here, so the layout, the print quality, make sure everything is okay. And once you're done, make sure you have some paper inserted and press the start button. You can also extend this black paper tray over here because this is where the paper will go. Okay, perfect. So here is the document we just printed. It looks perfect. So once you're done on the app, you can simply press the home button over here to go back to the main menu. Press OK. And you'll get back to the screen. Now let me show you how to scan. So there's the scan green button here. Press it once. Take the paper or photo or artwork you want to scan. Open the scan lid. And over here you may see on the right side a small arrow pointing to this corner. This is very important. You're going to take your document, place it facing down with the top part of the document on the right side and make sure that the corner of your document is aligned with the corner of the scanner. So just push it to the extremity like this where the arrow is. Then close the lid, take back your smartphone and make sure that these settings are the one that you want. So the document size is the correct one, do you want a scan to be in color or in black and white? And one thing that is important here is the resolution. Tap on it and you'll have to choose between different resolutions. If you're only scanning a document like the one I have put here where there's no image and details are not that important, select 200 dpi. If you're scanning a picture, an artwork, a painting, I don't know what, but something where you really want to have sharp details, then select high 600 dpi. Obviously the scan will take a lot more time if you select 600 dpi compared to 200, but this will give you the best results. In my case I'll just put it back to 200. Then you have remove background. In my case I do not want to remove the background, but if you're scanning a picture, let's say with some blank space around it and you simply want to scan the picture itself, you can select bla uh, remove background and the printer will actually simply remove what's around your subject and keep only the middle. Then we have automatic rotation. This is up to you to select it or not. I place the document the right way, so I won't need to rotate it. 
and finally image format over here if you tap you have to select in which kind of uh, format you want the file to be saved in my case this is a text document mostly so i'll select pdf but obviously if you're scanning pictures jpeg is the best format for this purpose i'll go back and to start simply press the big uh, green smart, uh, start button and now we'll just have to wait once the scan is done you're gonna see uh, on your smartphone screen this what the scan looked like and from here you can uh, delete it if you're not satisfied with the results you can actually crop it by selecting this icon over here you can rotate it you see simply by pressing over here it rotates the scan and we have three dots if you click on these three dots you'll have more options but most people will never use these if your document has multiple pages let's say you're trying to scan a document with five pages you just have to remove this scan put the next page and click on this plus button over here this will uh, scan the second page and you can simply do it like this until you're done scanning the whole document every pages will appear down here one two three four five once you're done press the next button it will ask you to give this scan a file name so click on this name over here this is the default name erase it and type your name so let me say test scan epson printer then press done press save and it will ask you uh, to select where on your smartphone in which folder you want this to be saved in my case this is automatically under the downloads and this is where i want it to go but if you don't want it to go here simply press back and select another folder i'll press save and you'll get this confirmation message the file is saved go back to the apps home screen yes thanks for watching i hope this was useful if so please leave a like comment down below subscribe and i'll see you in the next video